This is the third part to why we study the Bible. Reading from Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would be the focus of this whole study here in Jesus' name. Amen. The truth about the one who studies the Bible is this. He or she is truly blessed. In other words, the person is delighted to pick up the word of their Lord and study it. This lifetime experience is a joy that is incomprehensible to the simple, those who are without the Spirit of God. To grant them the understanding that is needed. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says this. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, which is to say it's God breathed. That's why we say the word of God. It's as if God himself was saying it. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof or rebuke, for corrections, doctrinal misunderstanding, for training in righteousness. You want to be righteous? Get to the Bible. That's exactly what's going to train you in according to what God desires. The Bible exposes to us the desire of God so that we do not fulfill the wants of ourselves or the lusts of the flesh, if you will. Though our salvation is not by works, and I, I emphasize that it's not by works, the Bible goes into great details regarding our conduct, speech, and thoughts, and so much more. In the first verse of Psalm chapter 1, the Bible lets us know that the man of God is truly joyful or blessed when his advice for life or spiritual matters does not come from those who do not know God. This is to say that in all matters, God expects his own people to approach him confidently through prayer and diligence in his word to seek wise counsel from him. Nor stand in the ways of sinners. Why? Because of a godly and a more honorable character of life. The godly person chooses to stand in the way of the godly character. He doesn't hang around those who express extreme disdain, dislike, and disrespect for God and godly living. We study the Bible because our delight or our joy is in the law of the Lord. We agree with what God says. We agree with it, even if our flesh doesn't like it. God is a good God. All he says and does is for his glory and our good. See, now, because we believe this, the one who studies the Bible meditates on what they've studied or read about day and night. It consumes them. It becomes them. And it is our way of life. Like the Bible says, our mind, our mind are renewed by it. And it also conforms us to the character God intended for believers. For those of you that are weary in your well-doing, let me encourage you. Your toil or your labor for God is not in vain. In verse 3, we see the result. We see the reward. We are partakers of the benefit of knowing the Bible. What's the blessing? I'm glad to say it's not wealth. It's not health. It's not success. It's not fame. It's not any of these selfish, fleshly desires that are passing away. It's much more precious and much more valuable than those things. The Bible says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit, fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And that prosper is not, 
it's not physical prosperous. It's not like one, no matter what my hand touches, it's going to turn into gold. It's not that type of prospering. It's spiritual. It's faith. It's spiritual matters, not physical matters. See, in comparison to the state or status of the nation of Israel at the time of Jesus, regarding their spirituality and relationship to God, Jesus, in Luke chapter 13, verse 6, the Bible says, Then he spake this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth the ground? Which is to say, why is it wasting soil? Why is it wasting up the ground? It's a waste of space if it's bearing no fruit. Cut it down. And he, the vine dresser, and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, which is to say fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Give it a little bit more time. If it doesn't for this last time, uproot it, cut it down. Okay. Our fruit that we bear from studying the Bible makes us useful to the spreading of the gospel and edifying the church and warning the world. When Jesus comes and you are found void of his spirit, which seals you and guarantees you eternal life with God, then you will be uprooted, you will be cut down, and you will be thrown in the lake of fire which burns day and night. According to the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 11, it says this, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Listen, when you die, you're going straight to hell if you do not receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. And Lord meaning that you are the slave, he is the master. He says you do. If you are found without this spirit, you are going to burn in hell. And it is not something that happens instantly, which is to say, once you die, you're just gone into nowhere or you're being punished for a brief amount of time. The Bible does not teach that. It doesn't teach that. It's very clear cut. Jesus taught this many a times. It's very clear cut. You will burn in hell for all eternity. The smoke ascendeth up day and night. It doesn't burn out. What stops burning doesn't Smoke doesn't continue to keep rising up. The smoke dissipates. It disappears. It vanishes. But in hell, it doesn't vanish. It keeps going because God is eternal. His punishment is eternal. His love is eternal. He has an eternal character. Don't sleep. Don't reject God. These are your times. Accept Him while there is still time because once you die, your time is up, for it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. We study the Bible to tell you the truth about God and His plans for the world. Repent. In Jesus' name. Be blessed.